this is my allergy medicine. My God, my allergy is so crazy right now. I take um, Flonase every day. That's you say what? Flonase? Oh my God, I can't. I, I hate that feeling. The other ones make me sleepy. Well, I'm always sleepy. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? For the only side I'll do it for yesterday, I have to get my allergy medicine. Allergy is killing me today. These are my new tips, new Tilello tips. They're a little bit different, but I kind of like them. Um, I haven't used my C-curve tip yet for those guys that are bottom. Yeah, yeah, I sound like an astronaut under the water. <laughs> my allergies got me all like clogged up. <laughs> but tonight I'm probably gonna get some allergy medicine. It's that pollen season right now in Florida. Okay, so we're going to use this nude here. I'm going to go right into the application process here. Good evening. I'm using my monomer. that a little bit longer but control that left it there a little bit we should do a nice abstract French today with a hot pink a really nice cover powder too you can tell this will be a good cover powder for any designs you're gonna need to do um chisel has a lot of like a lot of really nice cover powders from their nude collection well they're, they're solid nude lines and i really i really like because um i can use them for pretty much anything as a good base of course we're gonna do a second bead and also our apex bead it's a little bit bigger here I'm gonna leave this a little bit longer. It was a little bit runny. See, there you go. A few more seconds and it makes a whole world of a difference. I'm gonna nudge it up to my cuticle area. And I'll blend the bead downward to the rest of my nail. That's not as runny just because I held it for an extra two seconds. And it's not as funny, which really, really have to be, it's called timing. You're kind of like cooking the bead. Instead of having to try to maneuver it on the nail, I'd rather just hold on to the bead a little bit longer. Give myself a nice structure. I'll definitely put a little bit more powder on the, on the base of the nail. It's a little bit thin here in this area, but that, that's just fine. I can make that up, but I know my apex is there. So grab a little more powder, get it nice and cooked. And replace it right here. And this will give me more structure for my base of the nail so it doesn't it's not too flimsy here. I'll let it sit a little bit. Okay, it was too wet. I don't want to drag it, okay? I want to drag it so it's evenly distributed to the nail. I don't want to drag it when it's too wet, when it's just gonna drag right through the nail. It's no point of me putting up more structure. And if I time that right with the use the utilization of my brush. And there you guys go. Just proper structure for those lines. Good evening, everybody. 
No, I won't be using the secret tips today. But um, because my client wants coffin, so maybe my next uh, maybe when I come back from uh, from Houston, I'm gonna take a quick break. Okay, I'm gonna hold this one, two, three, four, five. My allergy is killing today. I had to cancel my other appointment. I think I'll get my allergy medication or something. Oh, I still remember last year when this season came along. When I was doing live, I was like blowing my nose all day long. Nice. I tried to post a giveaway before I leave for Houston here. I know I promised I'd do it in Chicago, but I just got too busy in Chicago. I'm sorry, guys. But I'll post it soon here. If you guys haven't followed my Instagram yet, follow it. Turn off that notification so you don't miss it. Structure. Um, I could use a little more apex, but I think I'm good on this. So long as the structure is there, I'm gonna shape my acrylic as I go. She has nice smooth. Um, I'm using uh, chisel one six nine, solid one six nine. Um, when you don't, you know why you have a problem knowing a good apex or not a good apex? It's because you're trying to do an apex. I don't teach you how to do an apex. I teach you a proper application that your apex is already there. So as long as you do how I teach you when in, in Atlanta, your apex will be there and you'll be able to automatically tell, okay, oh, that's good enough. A lot of times, like I said, beginners, you guys get too fixated with this word apex. It's not even, the word apex isn't supposed to even exist. It's there for protection of the nail, a little bit of aesthetics, but it's not really that important unless the nail breaks, right? So a lot of you guys are just forcing yourself to do this so-called apex, and that's why you're missing out on your application because you want to focus on the, the small piece of the puzzle, and you're missing out the two biggest pieces, your, your ability to control powder and applicate. If you do proper application, your apex is generally already be there. And if, and if you understand the proper application technique, you'll understand apex a little bit better. So beginners come in and they just want to do apex, apex, apex. They forget about the foundation of, of application. That's why you have to struggle. Every time you see a beginner come in and start doing this, do nails, all they worry about is apex. Why is that? Why is it a beginner have to worry about apex? No, you shouldn't. A beginner should not be working on long nails. A beginner should be working on medium, medium, short nails to get your experience down. Apex when you're working on longer nails. So why do you worry about that? You're jumping too fast into this career because you see everybody doing long nails. Yes, if you're a beginner and you come into this industry and you start doing long nails, your nails gonna look ugly, period, okay? Because you're not, you don't know how to control the powder yet. You don't know how to do application yet. So your nails can be bulky, so it's gonna look ugly. And I'm just going to tell you that straight up. That's why I tell you guys, you need to start focusing on the shorter nails first. Get your foundation down. Get your technique down. Get your experience in. Then you can start worrying about all this other stuff. You're jumping too fast into this industry thinking that you can be like everybody else. You're not like everybody else. Everybody else started before you. Everybody else has been there before you. They went through the same process. Take it how you will, but I don't think a beginner comes in should be doing anything but medium, medium, short nails. You guys shouldn't even be thinking about long nails. You, you turn to run before you can walk. 
And that's why a lot of you get discouraged. A lot of you fall out of this industry because you, th you think, oh, I can't do this. No, you can't do that. Doesn't mean you can do short nails. I'd rather have me telling you that than someone else tell you that, okay? And I will tell it straight up how it is. I don't believe beginners should be doing long nails. You guys are not there yet. You haven't earned the stripes to do long nails yet. As much as you think you can, you can, you can't, okay? You can try. And there's so much money into doing short nails. And I think that's, if you start a career, first thing you need to worry about is money, right? All that money waiting for you. I did short nails when I started doing nails. I didn't just do long nails. I hated doing long nails. It took me too long. You know, too much work. Why? So I can make what? Extra 20, 10, 15 dollars? Well, I can just do two sets of short nails, get them out of the way really fast, and make double the amount? It makes no sense to me. That's why a lot of nail techs, when they work in nail salons, they don't do long nails. They don't like to. It takes them too long. They rather do short sets and just get out of the way and make money. It's the ones that have the passion. Yeah, later on when you have the income and the ability, the clientele, you can choose, pick and choose long, short nails. Until then, you need to do all those short sets. 80% of the market wants short nails. 20% of the market wants long nails. Well, there are, and how many people are competing for the long nail clients? Everybody. So as a beginner, where do you think you should be starting at off? Mm-hmm. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, if I told you 80% of the customers in the industry are short nails, okay? So there's 20% long nails. Now, in the nail industry right now, every nail tech, about 80% of the nail techs are competing for those long nail clients. Why would you want to go into that pool of water and fight against those other people that have been there for so long? I would just stay in that short nail clientele pool, get my money, tell them ready. I stopped doing short nails because I was able to build up enough long nail clientele. But before, I used to, like a year ago, I used to do long nails all the time, guys. I mean, short nails all the time. If you check, if you, a lot of you guys who followed me back then, you saw like I did a lot of short nail clients. I did dip, I did everything. Anything that can get money. Anything that can get, you know, get my hand on experience. You can do a long set, it take you four hours, you can do Three short sets take you an hour, hour and a half each. Which will give you the more experience, the long set or the short set? Those short sets are going to give you the experience of application, shaping. Billy Sue's is a good drill for beginners. Mrs. Atlanta class is booked. Um, it's been booked. I'm there's no I'm not taking any more Atlanta class. I haven't responded to everybody yet. There's a few people waiting for deposits, but there's too many Atlanta requests right now, that's why. Um only class opening now is Connecticut. And I will announce um our West Coast class soon, guys. I've gotta figure out the dates for West Coast classes right now. So I can make sure I send you guys the right information. So please be patient with me. This is why I stopped taking Atlanta because there's a bunch of people who've got information in Atlanta. Well, actually, I did say first come, first serve. So whoever's too, yeah, you know what? First come, first serve. I, I responded to most of the messages yesterday, so if I missed yours, I'll be going through. If you're messaging about um, West Coast classes, I definitely haven't responded to you because I don't want to respond to you and forget about your message. So I left it unread so that when I have the right information, I can send you the right information, okay?
You messaged me when I first posted? Um, I don't know. I, oh, if you don't have a profile pic, I don't respond to those. Because a lot of times I get spammed from pro, non-profile pic accounts. I apologize. And you make sure you got to message the right accounts too. When I first posted that line the class, that's a long time ago. So you guys see, I got to check. Um, make sure you're matching the right account too. I have a burner account. Either Nerdass Studios or my, my, my personal account. My, my burner account was basically my temporary account. I don't check that anymore. So I guess I'm sending messages to there. Or just, it's easier to message me on IG. I send you the link to my uh, my Facebook account. Yeah, anyone with no profile pic, I'm not gonna, or a weird one, I don't respond to those. Yeah, my land class filled up fast. I think it filled up in like months. Uh, like less than a month. Actually, less than a week, uh, two weeks. <laughs> and there's that. We finished application for our, our nice set. Good structure. Add a little bit more monomer here. The monomer's getting a little bit low. Oop, way too much. Jesus. I just totally preach people don't put too much monomer in there. Look at me. Just slap that in there. Long nails may be easier for you because you probably, it's just more service area for you. I guarantee you, if you start out with short nails and you do proper short nails, you're actually gonna be more experienced and you'll be better with long nails. Because short nails require you to be able to control the amount of powder you use. And that's why a lot of people that do start off with long nails, they can never do short nails again. How would, how do you want your career to start off as? Learning the right way so that you can do both or just limit yourself to just long nails only and, th and that amount of income. Because I guarantee right now, there's more money in short nails than there is in long nails. And that is the truth because from a business owner, salon owner, and from someone that does nails that have done short nail clients, I would tell you, I'm making less money doing long nail clients now than I did when I, when I took in every client. Before, when I took in all clients, short nails, everything, I was making double my income. But when I switched over to the long nails only, I'm actually making less because my income was subsidized by my short nail clients. I was able to do 30, 40 minute sets for you know, $70, $80. And I was able to make so much more than doing like long nail sets for over $100, but it takes me an hour, you know? And I lose out on the clientele too. I transfer a lot of those clients down to my staff, but still, you need to be able to do all type of nails as a nail tech to be able to make your income, subsidize your income properly. Don't limit yourself for money, not in the beginning of your career. Yes, I can sacrifice that income, but you may not be able to sacrifice that income. Not yet. I used to sell this monomer dish, but I'm going to switch over to a new one. Um, this one has a slight issue with it. If you don't take care of it, it'll melt the outside. So, I mean, I would work, I use it fine, but a lot of people don't take care of it. So I just continue that. I'm going to bring in a glass monomer dish. Um, the monomer dish I bring in is only going to be 30 milliliters. It means it limits the amount of monomer that you guys are going to put in there. Cause a lot of you guys, I've seen a lot of my students bring some some monomer dampening dishes. They're so goddamn big. I, I don't even understand it. They're like juice boxes. And I'm just like, holy cow, you guys are using that much monomer per set? Because the the, the bigger your, your, your dampening dish, the more monomer you're gonna pour in there. 
I need to limit the amount of monomer yield that I'm using, show you guys how to use proper amount of monomer utilization, save you some money in the long run because you guys are using way too much monomer, way too much, okay? 15 milliliters is serious enough. And if you don't know what 15 milliliters is, all you gotta do is get those makeup, if you have any of the lotion or makeup um, containers, um, if you have an empty one, look at how much it is out there. Uh, look at, look at the, the size, it will say like 30 milliliters. So 15, about half of that. So you fill half of that up. I guarantee you guys are filling the way more than that. Save your monomer, guys, it's not cheap. A lot of times we have to throw out monomer because it gets contaminated. The last thing you want to do is throw out a whole batch of monomer. You never want to throw out ounces, okay? Monomer utilization is very important, okay? Definitely one of the key features of being a nail tech also. So my next one's gonna be glass, so it'll be resistant to everything. And you guys will be able to just fill half of it up and you'll know that it's 15 milliliters. You fill the whole thing up, it's 30. Hello, Sarah, how are you? Consistently shape your nails. A lot of guys don't realize this, this, the shaping of the nails when it's, when you do acrylic, huh? Even my students, after I teach them, I see their work, they still not shaping the acrylic. Um, it's for, it's, you need to create this habit of shaping as you're working, while you're working with the acrylic, not after. When you guys are using that acrylic, uh, that using that, that um, hand filer, you're depending too much on it, meaning that you want to make the shape with it. That's not the case. You want the crisp shape, it's during this process right here. If you can make this shape crisp during this process, you will do less work with the hand filer, I guarantee you. Start developing that technique, okay? Do not depend on the hand filer so much that you have to really have to shape while you're doing your acrylic. Your shape will become so much better. You'll be saving so much time. You won't be taking those all those long hours, 20, 30 minutes shaping your nails. Never. Never. You're building everything right now. Foundation, shaping. Utilize it. This process. It may take you a few minutes longer, but it'll save you a lot more time later on, okay? Doing other other steps that are unnecessary. When you get this down and you finally have it part of your like technique repertoire, you'll be producing sets under one hour, one hour and a half easily. Hey, Precious, how are you? Yes, this is a nice um, uh, cover powder by Chisel. One, two, three, four. I'm going to place my bead. Use your brush, shake the nail. It's 
See that? Just the sides. And I wait until the powder is a little more dry to do that, okay? When the powder is more dry, then it becomes more crisp. You're welcome, Summer Nicole. This number is one six eight. One no one six nine. And I'm almost out of it, so I definitely gotta get more. Kinda run up to uh David um Chisel's warehouse and beg for some more powder. <laughs> Just kidding. They'll probably send it to me. It's a little bit runny, so I'm gonna hold the bead in my, my brush, okay? Until it's ready. You don't always have to put the bead down just because you pick it up. If, it, if you feel like it's a little bit runny, just hold on to your brush, let it cook a little bit first, then work with it. I was gonna fuss the cuticles. You guys don't know why later when I do cuticle work. On my application, I always make sure that I do less work later when I do other things. This video will take about three seconds to marble. You guys see that? A marble, that means that you know it's ready. It's always a three second rule. Um, I have a three second rule with my, my monomer, one, two, three. So once I do the good amount of ratio and good enough bead, it's always three seconds before I can turn any powder into a nice buttery powder. Speaking of the hand filer, there it is. Let's see, watch one, two, three. I guess more shining is marbling. Now, this will let you know I'm going to be runny or I'm going to be dry. This is a little bit more runny, so I'm going to hold it about five more seconds. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So, at this point, it's cooked five more seconds onto my brush. Now, would you rather have hold that into your brush or you'd rather put it onto the nail and then having to worry about it run all over the place and flooding so yes you do not always are committed to throwing the powder down onto the nail unless you're ready okay so most nail techs would just go look at the powder and also right on slap it around the nail that's why you have flooding that's why you, that's why you have it's too dry Sometimes maybe the powder's too dry. The bead's too dry, your ratio's too low. Maybe you have to put another bead, but you already put it on there, so it's gonna start to dry too fast, and that's why you get a bumpy nail. And I'm finishing up here. I'm going to use this rest of the monomer to soak some of my brushes and clean them real quick because some of these brushes came from my class in Chicago and they're just so beat up. I didn't clean it before I stored it. Ugh. Being lazy. Now, Dad, you're being lazy. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna clean my brush for sure. 
The way I clean is I put it in monomer and I will push forward and push back. Pull back lightly, okay? It does is, and I like pressure like that. Still a lot stuck in here. You see that stickiness? That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, and you gotta soak, just soak in the monomer for a little bit. <clears throat> so, just like I told you guys, I'm not gonna shape too much. I don't do that much shaping. My shaping is already there. I'm beginners, I recommend a 10 or 12. It's a good size for you guys. And my shaping will be just me crisping up the shape with his hand filing. Nothing too crazy. Because remember, when you're shaping, you're actually removing. The more you remove, the worse it gets. <laughs> and just like that, you guys, it's our shape. It took about a few seconds, but our shape is there from our application and just nice, lightly smoothing it out. And you're just gonna repeat, rinse and oh, you're just gonna rinse and repeat that, and every nail. Now the thicker your side walls, the more powder you have on the sides. Of course, it's gonna take you a little longer to get the shape down. I hope you move this way a little bit. Thank you. And then just side to side motion, making sure I keep everything nice and even, so that I don't overfile on one side and make it crooked. There we go. and crispy what's good nail file brand to purchase there's no good nail br file brand you're just looking for the grit um you're looking for the, i'm using 100 100 grit you want to support nail dad 100 100 grit you can go to naildadshop.com and buy nail dads you can go to anywhere and buy the grit so i'm using 100 100 grit okay nail filers are made the same as every other nail filer more or less and some may have better quality some may have less quality i'll be honest with you and you'll be able to buy anything as long as you find the right grit. And like I said, <clears throat> you can support bigger brands and make them rich, or you can support local brands like Nail Dad. And yeah, I think it's based on, you know, who, who's gonna support you. And I'm not gonna tell you that nail filers are a different quality because they're all made pretty much the same way. It's a sandpaper on a sanding board. Some may be thicker, some may be thinner, but definitely look for the grit you want. I'm using 100-100. Um, you can get 100 by 180 or you can get 80 80 it's a little bit more grittier if that's what you like <clears throat> you're welcome so i'm doing a little bit of hand filing here so my application is so smooth i'm gonna hand file this is a longer nail Yep, really have to shape. If you're spending tw 20 minutes shaping, how do you soften sides of the nails to keep them cutting the lines? You can score them like this. Like that. So you're you're scoring the sides, the, the edges, not the sides. So you don't cut the clients, okay? You run them against each other, you wear out the edges, and you'll be able to do that.
why does the nails become weak after using heavy acrylics? <laughs> because you're adhering acrylic onto your natural nail bed. The prepping process removes your natural nail bed, and of course, the adhesion will actually eat into your nail bed. Your nails get weak after any time you manipulate or any time you try to bond anything onto there. It's a very, very common process. There's no such thing as doing nails and having healthy nails. So you gotta be careful when you do nails. They become weak because, you know, we're removing. To prep your nails, you have to remove a layer of your nails. To bond your nails, you have to bond something acrylic onto it. So when it comes off, it's gonna take off a layer of the, that nail also. So be careful, okay? Make sure you're not popping the nails off. Make sure you're soaking it off. It will save you from even more weaker nails. Popping the nails off when you're peeling the nails off the natural nail bed, which will cause a damage to your nail. We don't recommend you pop it off because sometimes the nail is on really tight and it'll make cause more damage to your nails. It's a bit of hand filing, speed up the process. After this, I'll be doing a little bit of um, cuticle work and then I'll be able to buff and do my designs. Matte top coat or top coat and call it a day. Do you recommend gloves for someone who is starting to practice? Yes, I do recommend gloves because you will start developing a reaction to this product regardless. Um, I don't know when. It could be a year. It could be six months. It could be tomorrow. It could be 10 years from now. It took me 10 years to develop an allergic reaction to this product. That's why I'm wearing gloves now. So limit your exposure to the products. Maybe you will prolong the duration of when you're going to have to start having a reaction to this because you will build a reaction. Your body's going to tell you, hey, you know, human, you know, I'm going to, my body, the body can try to fight it. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna, you're gonna be allergic to this. You're gonna have what you call contact dermatitis. Now, contact dermatitis is when you're allergic to the product and your skin will start breaking, drying up. You'll start getting these little bubbles on your your skin and it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be itchy. You're gonna scratch it. And it's gonna get worse and worse and worse until your skin cracks and bleeds. And it's gonna take forever to, to heal, three weeks. Then you have to start wearing clothes to eliminate your exposure to the products. And I still get outbreaks here and there, but not as bad because I wear gloves. But if I wouldn't wear gloves and I start working, I guarantee you I'll start having reactions. You still sell the monomer jars? I don't, not these ones. I'm, just, I'm selling newer ones though. Um, they'll be back in stock soon. I'll have these uh, glass jars. They're like heart shaped, it's cute. It's exactly 30 milliliters, and then I don't know how to exactly tell the stat, the tech to you guys how to do. It's all you need for one set. 30 is max. 15, if you're really frugal and you know how to utilize your monomer. If you do a good application, a nice hand filing technique will definitely save you a little bit of time rather than having to drill, 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 drill. Definitely a little bit more tiring, but once you get used to it, actually it's a little bit quicker in your, your hand motions. Actually, you work less harsh. But make sure you're using a worn out hand filing. <clears throat> a brand new one will actually eat more, so. This one hand down, and I'm gonna shake the other hand and hand file the other hand, then do kick work, and I be, should be finishing up. This should be under one hour for this set. <clears throat> also, 10 size 10 for long sets, I use 12. Yeah, basically, um, you can do a, a smaller size for smaller nails. I always use a size 10 sometimes when I use do for fills. You don't really need a big brush when you work with fills, right? So size 10 is definitely really good. Um, 12, definitely a medium sized brush. You can definitely pick up a big bead for longer nails. But the bigger the bead, the different the ratio and the harder it is to control. So be careful with that, okay? Should I make my own cuticle oil or purchase some? <laughs> if you can make your own, then make your own. Um, cuticle oil is cuticle oil. 
that. If you can make your own and save yourself some money, go ahead. There's really no wrong or right way with cuticle oil. It's just it's just to moisturize your client's cuticles. I don't have the time to sit there and make cuticle oil, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We'll have to finish up here with this hand filing, this uh, shaping. Shaping is so much easier when you do it with the acrylic guys. You guys will start when you guys start doing nails in a sense where you're, you're being more efficient and not trying to be fast. I'm not trying to be fast, I'm being efficient. It means I'm utilizing each step properly. Because being fast means I just gotta speed everything up, right? Being efficient means I make sure that I use the proper technique, proper methods, so that I don't overwork myself, use my time efficiently. And that will in return speed up this duration my nail my nail time Will you ever be in Virginia? No, I will not be. Um, I was. I already did my DC class in February, and my ATL class and my Connecticut class will be my last class in East Coast before I leave for West Coast, which are waiting patiently for me. Do you ever think, do you think I'm able to do long nails? It'll be easier to do short nails? Um, not necessarily. Just because you're able to do long nails, I mean, it's actually the reverse. A lot of people start off with long nails, that's why they never do short nails. The short nails require you to not build an apex, which is you guys want to build an apex. The biggest issue with people that do long nails and switch over to short nails is that you guys use too much product and it gets too bulky and it's too, and it's not um, nice, not aesthetically looking nice. Because you guys can't control a smaller ratio of products. It's easier to go from smaller to bigger than bigger to smaller in ratio. I mean, uh, sm long, uh, shorter to longer. And that's just the truth. Um, that's one of the biggest issues a lot of you guys have. So it's not that you don't know how to do short nails. It's just that you can't control. You're, you're so used to just bringing up a big deed. And you want to build an apex when you shouldn't be. That's why people that start off with short nails, they can actually move to long nails fairly easier. Properly, anyway. For a lot of you guys that have done short nails, you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, it's easier to, to increase your ratio than decrease your ratio when it comes to nails. Once you have a good firm control of the powder when you're using short nails, when you have when you move to longer nails, your control actually becomes more and more better, more and more strong, efficient. That's just how I learned how to do nails, you know. Just because you started doing long nails doesn't mean you're doing long nails properly either. A lot of you guys may be doing long nails and you're struggling with shaping or you're struggling with the control. Um, that's something you have to you have to learn during the shorter sets. You see that the prerequisites, those techniques are when you hone them in your shorter sets. Then as you get to longer sets, they become more and more usable.
I suggest whatever beat you need to do as long as you control the beat properly. Um, a short analogy, you can do one bead if you have to control the powder. Two bead if you have to, two smaller beads. So now I'm about to do cuticle work. I want you guys to watch carefully because a lot of people ask me about cuticle work. It's how you position your hand and what drill bits you use. I use a sharp bit from my store. Um, you don't have to use this. You can use a safety version of my bit if you have them until you get used to it. And then you can switch over to the sharp, okay? Don't jump into the sharp unless you're ready for it. Mm, use a little bit longer. Make sure all oh, I'm on the same length. I could have sworn I cut. Oh, I didn't cut this this hand down. I think same length. You measure cuticle to cuticle. Okay, guys. Now based on how much nail tip there is. Cuticle to cuticle is the proper way to measure. Make sure all the hand is the same length, okay? So I put this cuticle to this cuticle. I'm gonna say, oh, okay, they're about the same length. This cuticle to this cuticle, okay, they're about the same length, and we're good. So the middle pointer and ring finger are the three most important fingers, it has to be the same length. If those three aren't the same length, you're gonna have issues. The thumb and the pinky, you eyeball it. I think he's generally almost the one that's always a little bit smaller than all the other fingers, and that's just fine. It's just a smaller nail. And that doesn't mean you have to make it so small that it's gonna be noticeable, okay? Especially, you can get away with it with long nails, but with shorter nails, if you do that, you're gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna pop out. It's gonna be very... I forgot to cut these down. Hold this facing you, use the board, and file. There we go. Okay, now we do cuticle work. And I'll be using my, actually, I'm gonna clean up my, um, a quick brush real quick. It's been soaking for the last few minutes. It should be good. I'm gonna finish cleaning this off and I'm gonna throw away the rest of the monitor. Rip all the excess. If you guys don't need brush cleaner, monitor is one of the best ways to clean your brushes. Unless you have really, really overnight or like residue that's really stuck, then you're gonna be using acrylic uh, acetone. A brush cleaner has acetone in it, so all it is is acetone, okay? <laughs> it's a lower, lower grade acetone, so it's still gonna dry out your brush. Don't don't get tricked by a brush cleaner saying it's gonna moisturize all that bullshit. No. It dries the shit out of your brush. So I've been using a Five one for my store. It's a five one sharp. Sharp means that it's gonna be sharp, <laughs> right? 
you cut off the dead cuticles from the nails? Um, no, I don't. I push them back though. Because look, when I go through with this process, it's going to cut a lot of the cuticles. I'm cleaning my cuticle area so it's nice and flush. Now I already hand filed this, so I don't really need to work with that that much. I can run my file through. See how smooth it is? I'm just clearing out those rough edges. Let's let it save me time buffing. I'm also gonna go underneath, clean up any excess. My main concern is right here, this cuticle area, make sure it's nice and flush down. So I don't have any lifts, okay? And I just repeat over and over. This is cuticle work. This is where the lifts come from. You don't flush your cuticles down. This is why I don't clip off cuticles. See that? I'm, I'm already moving cuticle as I'm doing this. So why I gotta go with the nipper? Relax, there you go. You don't relax. I will cut you. <laughs> yeah, Ashley, I told you, I will cut you. Relax, or I will cut you. Got me drilling your cuticles, drilling your cuticles. Relax, or I will cut you. Oh my God. <laughs> That's my remix. My cuticle work remix. I sing it to my clients all the time. I'm running about a 13 speed, a 12, 13 speed. What's up, Yogi? How are you? I came back from Chicago. My allergies are crazy. The bees in Florida knows I've been cheating on them. My speed, I'm, I run it about a 10 to 13 speed. You may run it a little bit, a little bit um, lower though. My speed is a little bit high, so be careful. My machine definitely is one of the higher grade machines. I was in the U.S. Um, taking the class out of the country is really difficult because, um, you know, traveling right now, in the future, we might go to the islands, Canada, U.K., something like that, when the border opens, when it allows. Remember, I hand filed this, so I'm just gonna go through and just freshen that up. Oh, my daughter's trying to call me. So you push people back with the drill and cut up? No, I'm not pushing the drill back. Um, yeah, I, I prep with the drill bit, sanding band. And then now when I go through this process, most majority of the cuticles, uh, you know, what's the time your clients shouldn't have that much cuticle, guys? <laughs> uh, if your clients have a lot of cuticles, yeah, do a manicure, but if you kind of clients don't have that much cuticles for you to be clipping them off. Last thing you wanna do is clip off cuticle because you have to take another class. Uh -huh. Well, Atlanta is probably the only one closest until I go to the West Coast. Unless you wanna go vacationing with me. You wanna go to Vegas? Cali? Denver? Pick a vacation spot, Yogi. <laughs> Look at my hand file earlier, so everything was very smooth. Look at that. Ooh, child. Look at that cuticle. Didn't have to do any work at all, right? 
Why? Application, application, application. Cali? Okay, I'll see you in Cali then when I announce the date. It's going to be San Jose. San Jose. How soon is your Atlanta class? My Atlanta class is already filled. I have one or two seats waiting for people to put in deposits, but I'm not taking any more uh, inquiries. I'm going to turn down a lot of people. There was a set limit of people, so. I'm teaching you something new and unique. Something unique in the Atlanta class. I posted yesterday and there are everybody's excited. I thought, you know, since we're gonna be leaving East Coast and go West Coast, we're gonna do make Atlanta class great. We're gonna make it like a last hurrah. Oh, grit and buffer to use after the joke. I use part of 100, 100, 100, 100 buffer. Not that much. Remember, see my application is already smooth. You guys see that? Because I did my hand filing already. My application is good, so I'm not really doing a lot of work, um, to be honest with you. That gives me the ability to go through and, you know, less. It's just so easy. Look at this. The way my job is made, it's made for this. You see that? I hand file, so it's very smooth. I'm just going to go through and just buff it out, pretty much. It's amazing what the right tools can help you with, but like this bit is it. This is bit's the one, guys. This bit's price is good. There you go. Look at that. One hand down, guys. How often do you recommend changing the 51 bit? <laughs> My 51 bit, you can use it for about a year, two years, five. You know why? I don't drill a lot, and these are made well. You should never be changing out bits. Probably a year, over a year. I use a bit for about a year, a year and a half, before I change it out. I like using a, a worn out bit. This bit will wear out, as in it'll be less sharp at the edges, but the base of the, the bit will be good. I don't know what bits, what bits you're using that you're changing out, that you have to worry about that, but bits are usually last you about a year. And plus, if you don't drill a lot, it means you're not putting a lot of pressure on this. How often are you switching out your drill bits? Shouldn't be switching out that much. I think my last drill bit I used before I got my five and ones, I used it for three and a half years. When making the Kiriko flush, how long did you know to keep going for the Kiriko until it's flush? You'll know, you'll feel it, uh, Karen. And you definitely gotta make sure that you, there's something about, you know, you'll know, because the feeling of drilling acrylic and the feeling of drilling a natural nail is different. You get it right into the, you get it right before the natural nail. You'll see it. You see the natural starts getting exposed. That's when you know when to ease off on the pressure. 
See, look. See that right before the nice nails? I'm not going to drill more deeper into that because I don't want to make that groove. So I ease up on the pressure. This is why it's all muscle memory. It's just practice, you know? You can't teach drill work, physical work. You can teach the technique. You can teach how I, hold, I do it. But it's something that takes time. Yeah, only switch out. The, yeah, sanding band is what you switch out. It's just they, they wear out faster. These metal bits, if they're made well, well, the quality of my bits are definitely made really well. They last you forever. I can't speak for other brands, actually. I can't speak for other brands. I'm sorry, guys. I can't speak for other brands that may be a lower quality metal that maybe get worn out faster. But this metal that my bits are made out of is very solid. And after this, we're going to give a nice buff. And we're going to just do the design so we're finished, you know? Nothing too crazy. We're going to do some nice um, abstract French. We're going to have our client relax her fingers. Okay, okay. We only got three more to go, okay? We don't want any accidents. Any oopsie daisies. This is why I don't crimp the cuticle when I when I do my prepping. Because the client's nail is going to be so tender. The last thing I want to do is trim the cuticles and then come through and do like do this part. And they're like, oh my god, I feel that. And then they're going to move, fidget, and they're going to cut them. Too, you can move the cuticle back a little bit, but just be careful. So now the cuticles get too close. I cannot wait to get my allergy medicine after this. Right in between. Now the reason why I like using a sharp bit because I can go right in between the cuticle and the acrylic there and flush it down. The reason why we flush it down is because when this grows out in a couple of days, it's going to be nice and even. So it's not going to grow out and protrude from the nail or have anything that pops up. And that that is where your lips come from because you're not sealing in the cuticle area. But the products doesn't definitely help. If you're getting you know, like primer, hydro, whatever, banana bond, James bond, bail bond. Whatever you're using, you know, is fine. But this is the the, the, the sealing of this, this process right here is so important as a nail tech. 
And we get down and you will not be able to do what I'm doing right away. You know, it's not possible, but you will get here. As in, the more you practice, the more you work, the more your hands get used to it, the more comfortable you are using the drill. And that is, takes time. As in, now that we grow, we grow the skill, okay? We're not, we don't we don't just start out right like this right away. So people say, hey, teach me how to do a kiko no hiri. I am teaching you. You're watching me do right now. It just takes more experience for you because I don't have more experience than you. So we don't teach e filing We teach how to use the e-file properly. But everything else, you have to really hone in yourself, your skill, your abilities. Okay? Underneath. Just when I say this, you will get it. It just takes time and practice. Rome was not built overnight. Neither will your your, your nail career. I'm gonna clean up underneath. Any excess? I really hate any excess. Hundred hundred grit, and I'm gonna just give it a good buff, and then I'm gonna have her wash her hands, and we're gonna go right into doing the design. So the hot pink French. I'm going to fold up my dust left there. I'll be using my hot pink gel art gel to do this process. That's a fine. The red one was a fine. The medium is a blue. So I'm gonna zoom out real quick. Sorry about that, guys. Use this hot pink here. Use my liner brush. I'm using my flat brush to paint in. My gel art paint.
this gel art paint. It should be able to stay right where it is. So now I'm gonna go through with my brush and I'm gonna fill in the French here. I don't need that much. Just enough. This is a pigmented gel paint, so it's gonna really, really give me that nice thin layer. And not be too thick. And it won't bleed out either. I just stay where it's at, where I need it to be. So this is a gel art paint. That's for my gel art collection. This is the neon pink. See how precise it is. I'm just gonna fill this in and I'm gonna go back there with the liner brush to make sure I get the precision down. The lines nice and even and neat again. The thing about this gel art paint is different from gel polishes. Gel polish, you will never really keep your, you'll never be able to keep your shape once you painted this. And as you guys notice, the shape is right there. It stays. You don't see any on the side, no excess, because it's very pigmented. I will possibly put this on sale again. Another sale for my students. When I go west coast, it's already on sale actually. So this comes six neon six pastel. Yes, part of saw me do a set with I did multiple colors of this. I use all my pastel. This time I'm using my neons. As you can see, I've gotten to the third. The fifth finger, and then we go back right here. You guys go back, you guys notice that this finger hasn't moved at all, it's not supposed to. It stayed nice and crisp. I'm just gonna go through with the liner brush. I'm gonna fill in these little gaps and corners that I miss with a big brush, um, just in case I miss anything. Redefine these lines, make sure they're nice and straight. Look at that. Look at that. The pigment is just so, it just stays. My shape is there. Decision.
it moves when you want it to move. I'm gonna clear that real quick. So one of the biggest problems when we're using gel polish when doing this stuff is that it just will bleed right away. And that's why gel art paint had became such a popular thing. Because now we can be able to put those lines in and leave it there and it won't move until we want it to move. The last thing we want to do is come back and look and up. Oh, it's bled all over the place or it's overflowed. Um, it's very annoying uh, as an artist um, when that happens. So that's why art gel was invented. And this just makes it easy for us to move the work not have to worry about the product, you know, making our work harder for us. I'll do it the opposite direction for this one. And of course, I'll do the same thing I did the other one. I'll just go back through with my flat brush. And this brush is not like a regular brush. The way the bristles are, are very soft. It absorbs the gel. So I can even get nice, consistent coating. Just one coat will give me that nice hot pink that I want. Just relax your finger. Ashley, for the love of God. <laughs> I'm not even doing cuticle work anymore. Relax. I'm going to paint right around this area. Very nice one coat. My two coats will make it too thick and I'll, I'll lose my shape. So a nice pigmented one coat. That's all I need. the same in black and white it should be coming in back and restocking soon everybody's waiting for that um white and black is definitely very good for this paint because you can use utilize that a lot when you come when it comes to art and stuff it was so popular it sold out so fast well, i didn't have enough of those compared to what i had for that gel Make sure it's nice and you didn't want that. Make sure I get my corners. So this is this is like an abstract, it's called like a half French. And we put some abstract lines into it. It's really, really unique. Very popular right now, actually. Um you can do I did a set. The other day was such an amazing set with multiple colors doing this. Um, you guys check that out on, on the IG. It looks really nice. And this mat is just amazing. I'm just using a nice striper brush for my line. These will be back on stock soon also. Oh. 
take your time. This is important that you get this the right way, how you want it, okay? Okay, go ahead. So now I'm gonna put a little bit of white. I'm gonna offset this off with a little bit of white. Connect everything and we're gonna cure and we're gonna matte top coat and call it a day. I will be leaving for Houston tomorrow, so I won't be doing nails for you guys for maybe a week. I might have a class I'm taking. Huh. Me taking a class, yes. Now that takes classes too. I was able to get into a class that I really, really wanna learn some new techniques for myself personally. Not to reteach. Just for myself, a little bit of a self growth for me, changing my style up a little bit, where I do designs. It also was first my only my first time taking a class ever, so I'm kind of excited. This goes to show, guys, we all can learn. First time ever, I want to be a student. <laughs> That's exciting for me.
And here we are, finishing up the last two nails here. I'll throw some nice matte top coat on this. Bring everything together. Okay. Hear that? I'm gonna mat top coat. I love doing abstract art and matting. It just makes everything so nice. Since, you know, it's our last set. I think it looked so much better if we did this. Hold on. Hold on, guys. A little bit of creativity coming through here. Ah. My wife doesn't wear nails, but the last couple times I did her nails, her nails went viral. So um, her set was one of the very first COVID-19 sets I did back then in March, last March. It went viral on, um, oh, what, what, what's that? The Shade Room? You guys know what the Shade Room is? You know what the Shade Room is? Yeah, her, her set went viral on the Shade Room. The Shade Room reshared her stuff, my stuff, her set. Um, I was very... It was like it was like right before we did closure and we we're just buying like a bunch of like toilet paper and all those like uh, uh you know hand sanitizer and stuff and clorox and i'm sitting there and i'm like let's do some clorox nails and she's like okay and then boom we did clorox scott's aquafina and then i posted it and then a couple days later the shade room contacted me okay hey, can we repost your work i was like sure i didn't know what the shade room was i didn't and then I asked one of my clients, hey, uh, what is this shade room? She's like, why? I was like, they want to repost my work. I was like, oh, okay, sure. They're like, you know, they're really big, right? I'm like, this is before Nail Dad was even Nail Dad, before I started doing live. So you look back last year, March, or I think, what was it, two years ago? Well, my set was one of the COVID-19 sets. I was very one of the very first ones to do those, and then it inspired a bunch of people to do their...
I should repost that set for you guys to see. It should be somewhere on my Instagram timeline and you scroll all the way down. Isn't that crazy, guys? What, has it been two years since COVID? 2020? Oh, one year. Now we're gonna mat it. No, I'm not adding anything else. <laughs> I just thought it would be a little bit more unique if we added that extra line there. This white gel is not mine, it's from another brand, but um, I like mine better. <laughs> mine will definitely be more crisp. Can't wait to restock. I don't even have my own white right now. I can't wait to restock. And switch. But my wife wore long nails every wrap. Mm -hmm. She doesn't, so she got two babies. guys appreciate you guys joining me for this set it's a pretty fun set switch hey look at it madden pretty fun Yeah, Matt just brings it up. Ah, can it one longer? It's like a little abstract art. Abstracty. You guys put like little rhinestones here if you wanted to. Make it really cute. Little pink ones. But structure wise, you know. A structure. You guys see that? All consistent, same. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you guys later for the Q&A. Um, I'm definitely going to go get my allergy medicine. <laughs> and do a little shopping for my Eastern trip. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys. And I will post a, I will post a giveaway today. I promise you. So make sure you follow the Instagrams. Turn up the alert so you don't miss it, okay? It'll be powder. Bye, guys. Thank you.